It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, and I'm here with my lovely boss co-host, Law Lapides. Hey, Law. Hey, Anne, you look super disco sexy. 70s, <laughs> maybe 80s. Why, thank you. You want to do the hustle? Do the hustle. <laughs> I just turned into John hey, Travolta. Who said who said we don't have fun here? <laughs> in boss land. In boss we land. We do, we do. Hustle. Hustle, hustle. That is like the word for my business is hustle, hustle, hustle. Mm. And, you know, I think I've been a kind of a hustler all my life. <laughs> me too, in a good way. In a good Not way. Not a negative way. In, in a, a good, good way. way. And I think it probably helped me to get where I am today, really, all those little side hustles. Let's take a journey back in time and talk about our Ooh. side hustles. And I'll tell you what, bosses, there's no shame in a good side hustle. That's for sure. Mm-mm. I think it helps build your character and get you to where you are today to become a resourceful and entrepreneurial boss. Yeah, there's no shame in that game. Let's go down memory road, and I'm willing to share. I'm actually proud of working really hard to get to the day where I was able to open a studio. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a whole long path leading up to that that the public doesn't see and doesn't know about that really is the building block to getting to your business, Anne. Yeah. So take me way back. Take me back to, like, way even your back. teen years okay, my teen of your years. first jobs, because that counts. Okay. That counts. What were your first jobs? All right. So I'm trying to remember. I grew up in New York State, upstate New York. And okay. so there was a legal working age. Okay. But I started Which very you early. ignored. <laughs> I started very early. I started at the very young age of 12. Ooh. But I wasn't working for cash. I was working for riding lessons. So some of you uh, that follow me on Facebook may have noticed that I've been spending an awful lot of time on the weekends going to horse shows. Well, that is just a blast from my past. I'll tell you what. When I was young, horses were my passion. I mean, I wanted to grow up and become a professional horse rider. And I... I had a couple of horses growing up, and I showed growing up. And I'll tell you what, that is not a cheap hobby. And so I used to work at the barn from the young age of 12, shoveling lots of manure and taking care of the horses, grooming the horses. Oh, my goodness. I spent probably seven days a week at the barn. And I would do that in trade for my riding lessons. And riding, of course, is a whole, like, I could have a 30-minute podcast on what riding taught me. I think that the lessons that I learned from my horses were just invaluable in helping me to shape who I am today and to be fearless because I had a lot of fear. I was afraid. I mean, I was thrown off my horse multiple times and I just was taught to get back up on that horse and face Mm -hmm. those fears and... Oh, it was a wonderful, wonderful time in my life. And my mother loved it because she knew where I was. I wasn't hanging out in the bank parking lot, you know, drinking beer. Right. And the horses know you. Yeah. They love you. They know mm-hmm. your voice. They're so emotional and creative. Well, that's it. It was such an right. emotional connection. I mean, it's not just a physical ride. It's very much a mental ride because animals sense every essence of your being. They can sense when you're nervous. They can sense when you're afraid or fearful. And really just becoming one. And it amazed me because I used to jump. That was, I wrote English and I used to jump. That you take a beast that is 2,000 pounds and you point it towards a fence and he willingly goes over it. Sometimes they don't willingly go over it, but right. usually that's, I say, operator error. You haven't brought them into the fence <laughs> properly so they can safely jump the fence. But I'm telling you, just the animals, they're just amazing, beautiful, kind, wonderful beings that here, I'm going to point you at this fence and I want you to jump over it. And I'm going to be on your back while you do that. Mm. And I'm going to continually ride around these different fences and courses. And you're going to just willingly do this for me. And it just, it amazes me the kindness and the connection you have to have with that horse to really have that be a thing. Mm. 
So it sounds like a very profound way of teaching a moral lesson to our listeners that you learn a lot of hardcore skills when you side hustle, mm, right? How absolutely. to build trust, absolutely. right? How to go on the ride and mm-hmm, trust, how mm-hmm. to get up into fearful heights and fall and get back up again. Yeah, when you make a mistake, right? you know, get right back up Love again. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love so that. So much. Love and that, that was not necessarily for money, although I used to groom. I mean, that was a side hustle after I would work at the stable. I would also groom as a side hustle. Then I would make cash mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the horses that I bought braided and groomed. I would do that. I would go to horse shows and groom for people. And oh gosh, it paid for a lot of my professional riding gear, my show entry fees, my jackets, my boots, horse tack and equipment. Such a good time of my life. So that was my very first. What about you, Law? Well, you know, besides the typical before 12, which I did like babysitting and Mm. I did mowing lawns and all of that delivery stuff. Mm -hmm. Those were not prolific to me, even though I was doing skills. The first one was when I was 15, 15 years old. Think about that. 15 years old. I think I was a freshman in high school. I had a shoe store across the street from my high school, a family-owned shoe store, and they trusted me to be a manager, and they gave wow. me keys to the shoe store. And that wow. changed my entire life because I suddenly realized, I didn't think in this way, but I had the abilities and skill sets to be trusted and to be a leader. And so I would literally open up the store, close the store, wow. manage the store at 15. And I think back on that 40 years ago and how those little bits and pieces really built my life, built mm-hmm. my whole mindset over a lifetime. So that was the first, I think, prolific side yeah. hustle for me. What's your next one? Well, let's see. I probably did that all through high school. And then in addition to that, I was like, well, I got to make some cold hard cash because I like to buy clothes and or other things, records or CDs. Actually, it was records. CDs were in college. See, now I'm really dating myself. But Ah yeah, so then it became, I worked at a department store in retail. So I worked at Sibley's. You learned so much doing that, oh, right, Yeah, Anne? I worked in so retail many. in the kids' department. And I also worked for a gas station kind of mini mart, which there I had the keys and I had to, like, lock up at night. I was working that nights. And, yeah, I mean, those were, like, you make the minimum wage. And I worked, God, however many hours I could. And believe it or not, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to say that In high school, they had a work-study program, so I had had enough credits Mm. by the time I was literally a beginning of junior year to graduate. So I elected for my senior year to do a work-study program where I came to school for, I think, just the morning hours, and then in the afternoon, I worked. Mm. So I had to just put in a certain amount of hours per week, which I'm quite sure I did 15 to 20. But most of that was, you know, encompassed just me going to the stable and working. And so that was really kind of great, the work study. And and I just, I absolutely loved all my little side jobs that mm. I did. Waitressing, which was, again, such a, learn those life lessons that really help you when you are running a business and owning a business that can really help you in a multitude of ways. I mean, that was the customer service aspect, you know, which really helped me in my job today. What about mm. your next one? I tell you, it's so subliminal. You right? like don't even realize for many years how it gets ingrained in your core, and then it comes out in really important ways as a business person mm. and as a business owner. I too was a server. Mm-hmm. I too worked in retail. I was a bus girl. You're a bus girl. And I was a waitress. waitress yep. Right. But the next prolific job for me was at 19. I was in college. One of my professors, who was actually teaching me singing, said, you know what? We're going away on vacation. Can you stay at my home and take care of all of my animals? Mm -hmm. And I was a huge animal lover like you, uh, Mm -hmm. like my fur children. I said, okay, I'm happy to. And she said, how much do you want me to pay you? I said, you're going to pay me to do (laughs) that? What do you mean? I said, I don't know. Pay me. And she paid me. So I was changed my world. So I launched a pet sitting business at 19. And I did it for 10 years, and it brought Mm -hmm. me through all of my professional performing through my 20s and through Mm -hmm. my college years and bought me a new car and savings for what would soon be later or later in my 20s, my graduate school career. That side hustle was major, and it set me up for the next whole piece of my life 
And I loved it. It was like mm-hmm. if I didn't do what I do, I could have easily gone in another direction of creating like a multi-million dollar animal business sure. or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Turned into that. And the skill sets were amazing because I already knew, like you knew, how to have keys in my pocket and be totally trusted yep. with yep. someone's property. So I was like a janitor. I had Huge Mm. sets of keys of houses all over my area that I'd be going into and taking care of that. I loved it because I'm a very pragmatic person. I love taking care of things. I like things that are purposeful, and I loved my animals. It was like, check, 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 check. Nice. And the money was terrific. Even at that time, which was a good, you know, 30 years ago now, at that time, I was a young kid pulling in $25 or $30 per animal and could take up to 10 a day. Mm -hmm. Do the math. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, my goodness, I can do my theater. I can finish my bachelor's degree. I can love on my baby pets all over the place because I'm trusted. And where's that going to lead, you see? And that was started out of an accident side hustle. Wow. I'm going to say, okay, college then next for me Mm -hmm. was, okay, so I started off doing, and this is my preliminary voiceover. So I started reading textbooks onto tape for disabled students at the college. And okay, so I'm going to set the scene for you. I was reading physics and calculus books onto like tape recorders, like with the cassette tapes. I so remember when I those. had to when I had to record, <laughs> I press play record at the same time. And I would be reading the actual questions in the back of calculus problems. So I had to understand what all the symbols meant. And so if I made a mistake, I had to stop, rewind, and then record the whole thing all over again. That paid for my single room. I had a single room in a suite, which was great. And I was also an RA. I was a dorm guard. So that also paid for my room at the college because I basically kind of paid my way through college by doing things like that. And also that was when I was a singer, you know, in high school and in musical theater and choir and continued that in college Mm -hmm. and met up with a person where we started singing at weddings at venues. So we were like a little bit of a singing team. We would do duets at weddings. And so I made money that way. Why did I not know you were a real singer? How come I didn't know that? What was your favorite song? What was one of your favorite wedding songs? Oh my gosh, we're talking about the wedding songs that were back Back in the day, we used to sing like theme from Ice Castles, oh. <laughs> like those kinds of things. Oh my Ave God, Maria. the Carpenters. Oh, yeah, yeah, but all of those things. But it was cool because she had a 12 string guitar and we would sing harmony. Oh and so, gosh. yeah, it was one of my so favorite good. things to do. Although I can't say that I'm a singer today, but I can carry a tune. That's for sure. That's amazing. A lot of my musicality comes from my singing as well as, you know, I played piano for eight years. I took piano lessons. So again, that's another core skill that I think is so important that contributes to my business today and what I do today in voiceover. It's very musical for me. So Totally. Yeah. I'll share my last, I think, my last side hustle in my life, which actually became part of my career. And that was when I was 28 years old. I was still pet sitting because I was a huge multitasker, but I fell into teaching. (laughs) I fell into teaching and I started teaching in a modeling agency. Mm. And Mm -hmm. I absolutely fell head over heels for teaching while I was trying to get into grad school. And it took me about four years to get into grad school. And I was doing my pets and doing my teaching and doing my performing. And then I got into grad school. All of that stopped. I moved to Cali, to California, and started a whole new life. But the teaching became Mm. an integral part of my whole career and my whole program. So I don't know if it's a side hustle or not, but at the time it was. And it just seemed fun. It seemed like something cool to do and something to challenge me and my knowledge base. Like, you don't really know what you know until you have to teach it to someone else. Yeah, 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 because you have to learn it like 20 times more. I'll tell you what, after college, my teacher kind of came out of me because I went to work in the corporate world as people know I was a design engineer for an orthopedic company and I Mm. was designing hip and knee prosthetics. However, I used to go for training. I used to go up to Massachusetts, used to go up to Boston, and I used to go for computer training because I did a lot of my design work on a CAD system. And I'd go for training frequently up to the Boston area because that's where the company was. And I met my 2B boss there at a computer class and he said, hey, 
I need somebody to teach this CAD at my school. Would you be willing to do that at night? And that became a side hustle for me at night. And I said, sure, I'd love to. And I started teaching at night. And boy, I'll tell you what, I fell in love with that. And I should have known because Back in the day when I was a tiny girl, before I was 12 and working in the stalls and shoveling my manure every day, I was teaching my dolls flashcards. So I feel like I always had teaching in my blood. I started teaching at night, and then I ultimately went to work full-time for the school, did that for 20-some-odd years. And then ultimately, that was my last career before I decided to, well, I went into voiceover part-time while still working in that career and then decided to go full-time into voiceover. And I just love the teaching. I continued the teaching, started Mm. coaching in voiceover. Me too. And while I was working my way through the corporate world, I also consulted on the computer end of things. So I would work for companies setting up their computer systems or doing whatever system admin type of deals. So I constantly, I think I worked like... Oh, my God, 60 to 80 hours a week since I was 21, since I got out into the working world. I mean, the real working world after college. And interestingly enough, I remember setting my priorities. I was like, you know what? I hate cleaning houses. I mean, I'm a clean person, but I hate having to clean my house on the weekends because that was the time that I had to do it since I was working full time. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to work overtime so that I can pay someone to come and clean my house. Mm. And I said that at age 21, and I've had that happen ever since. I mean, there's maybe a time when I stopped it, but I was like, I will always make sure I make enough money. When we were talking about priority setting, right? I will always have someone to clean my house because I'd rather work the overtime than clean my house. I mean, not that Uh, I'm not a clean person, because I really am. I do all the cluttering. Yeah, that that exactly is what it is. Listen, just because you're capable and really good at doing something doesn't mean you should be doing it. Yeah. Dude, right. So true. Sometimes you have to take that time. That's what we were talking in our last podcast about building the team. It's like, well, you have to be the head of the ship, the captain yeah. of the ship, which yeah. means you have to steer the ship. You can't be doing all the jobs on the ship, even though you may know how sure. to do them. You shouldn't be doing them because you need to steer the ship. So it's the same in this case. Yeah. It's like you are already smart enough and mature enough to understand that, oh, I can do a great job cleaning my own house and I don't mind doing it, but I want to spend that time really building my career and really putting that into more important things. You're so right, because that's actually what I was doing. I was building my career and moving up in every aspect of my career, whatever I was doing, I made it a point to grow and to move up, to get promoted and do what I needed to do. And a lot of that included spending time educating myself. And once I got into my last job, which was at the school teaching, but actually I was on staff as a tech person, but I also taught all the IT electives. I taught at night and ultimately, did phone installs, which is where I ended up being the voice of the phone system. And that got me into voiceover. Then I did that part-time while I was working full-time at the job. And then ultimately, when I decided to go full-time into voiceover, I then had another side hustle because then I wasn't full-time. I didn't have the client's built up yet. So I was like, well, gosh, there's no money coming in. So I need a side hustle. And so again, the side hustle for me for that was I literally worked for a chiropractor. I went to a chiropractor and he needed help. And I was like, you know what? I need to bring in some cash to help pay the bills. And he needed an office manager. And so I became an office manager for just about, gosh, I'm going to say it was a while. Maybe it was the first five years Of my business, I worked 20 hours a week. I got free adjustments, which was great. And that's what I did. And I just remember my mother... God bless her, because I'd had all these career jobs and promotions and titles. And she's like, so, Anne, when are you going to get a real job? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, Mom, I am building a business. I'm an entrepreneur. And so, mm. yeah, but I had side hustles. And I always encourage students that are just coming into the industry to do the side hustle. Take the experience from life, from your work, and utilize that to continue the revenue stream while you build your business. So important. Yeah, and- Make sure it's flexible. It has to be flexible in nature so that you're not putting your career and your education on hold. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want a side hustle to take up so much time and energy that you're not building the more important building blocks. You want it to support, but not to take up all of your time and your energy and focus. And make sure it's something you kind of like. You don't have to be in love with it. But make sure it's not something that's causing anger, disdain, grief, because then you're going to bring that into your career. 
career sure. and into your education, and you're not going to be successful there and sabotage the thing that you want to build. So yeah. you have to kind of think Absolutely. the whole thing through. And don't be afraid to switch it out. Yeah. If it doesn't work, switch it out. Well, that's the cool thing when you're in business for yourself, right? You can try yeah. it. If it doesn't work, you can try something else. I can't tell you how much my own experience has helped me. I have business mentorship programs that I work with my students that has helped me to help my students. I mean, and the fact that I'm like, hey, I was an office assistant. And my mother's like, Anne, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being an office assistant, right? Or an office manager. Again, yeah. it's people serving. And I had developed a lot of skills doing that. And I was very organized and wonderful. And at the time, it was just enough hours so I could bring in money to contribute to the household expenses. And yet mm-hmm. gave me time to be able to audition. And it was close to where I live. So I could run home and audition during the day if I needed to during a break. It was wonderful. I mean... I cannot talk enough about the benefits of the side hustle. And there's probably hundreds of them that you could really get your hands on and learn from and enjoy, make money at, learn skills. And don't look at it as you're wasting your time or you don't want to do it or you resent doing it. Look at it as, no, this is part of my education. This is part of my investment into my education and career. I have to do this so that not only I build money and capital, but I learn things. I learn how to take care of someone else, something Mm -hmm. else, build trust, you know, learn skills, selling skills, dealing with money, all of that. It's so funny. I think education has always been in my blood. I mean, again, I say it how many times a day, Law, when people say, what is your purpose in life? It's to educate. I truly, truly believe that from being a small girl teaching flashcards to my stuffed animals animals to the VO Boss podcast was a whole resource for education. The VO Peeps was, you know, when I got out of teaching full time, I was like, oh God, I miss teaching. So let me have a group that I can provide educational resources to. So I say follow that passion in all aspects of your hustle and side hustle, really. And you can't go wrong. And I think education is such an important part of just continual growth and building and growing your business Mm -hmm. as a boss. And be proud of it. Yeah. If you're not willing to share it or talk about it, if you're hiding it, Mm -hmm. if you're embarrassed by it, it's probably something you shouldn't be doing. So find things that you can add to your resume, that you can chat about at an interview, or that you can be proud of and make some good connections through. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like the biggest thing that I'm always promoting too when people are just getting into the industry. What are your skills? What is your life skills? What are your job skills? What have you done? The more things you have done, the more you can bring to this side of the business. I mean, think about it. What we do is we have a product, we sell it, right? We sell it to companies, (laughs) So it's not just, I mean, it's creative. Yes, it's creative, right? And it's artistic, of course. But you have a product, your voice, that you are selling to companies. So all of your life, you've probably worked in some form for a company or for a business that you've gotten paid for. So you can bring that experience to the table to enhance your business, to either side hustle it, have what I call the divisions of your business or the tendrils of your business. And it's funny because even now that I'm in full-time VO for many, many years now, I now still have many divisions of my business, which I consider to be my side hustles. And you yourself, Law, have multiple divisions of your business as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're growing. It's yep. not static. Mm-hmm. Like, you're mm-hmm. never done. You're never saying, okay, this yeah. is my business, and that's where I cap it. Like, you should always be saying, what's my projection for the next year yeah. or five years? Yeah. Where do I want to go with this? Absolutely. What do I have to do in order to figure out how to do it? And maybe that's a professional side hustle yeah. that you have to do or you have to hire someone to do in order to figure out how to grow. Oh, I'm constantly thinking. I love that. I'm constantly thinking about that. Again, as we move through changing and evolving markets, right, in voiceover, is there an opportunity for you to continue? to take these skills into even something else. Let's say if you wanted to do something else in addition or parallel with voiceover, what skills do you have now that you can evolve into? What's going to happen in the future for this industry? It's always good to try to look and really predict what's happening in the future. And that might be another podcast episode for us, Law. What's going to happen to voiceover in 10 years? You know, there's a lot of people asking that question. And there's a lot of people 
that have ideas and theories. And, you know, I've got my own theories, but it doesn't stop me from thinking about if this were to happen, right? What's your plan B? What's your side Mm -hmm. hustle? How are you going to evolve or maybe shift into something else or maybe not something else, maybe something in addition to? And I think it's always something that it's wise and strategic for you bosses to be thinking about. I mean, if you are not thinking about it, then you might want to rethink being in business for yourself. Yeah. Always have your backups ready to go. Mm -hmm. Have the safety nets there for you. Just know your plan. And A, B, and C is always going to work for you. I think we yeah. are going to go back to that hustle, right? Yeah. We're going to go back and do yeah. the hustle. Now I have to go see if we can lease the music, right? <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, bosses, do that hustle. It has been a wonderful conversation, boss. I love, love, love talking to you, Law. I called you boss. <laughs> boss Law. I love our conversation. And I love you right back yes, to and pieces. thank you so much for continuing to be by my side here. It's just a joy, and we're coming up on our year's anniversary. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to have to celebrate with a big party. Big party. Big party, guys. So, bosses out there, simple mission, big impact. 100 voices, one hour, $10,000. Four times a year. Gosh, do you even know what I'm talking about? Well, if you want to find out more, visit 100voiceswhocare.org to join us and join in on the giving. Big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can connect and network like bosses. Find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Next week. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL. I want you to channel a dog. Can you guess? Channel a dog. Channel a dog. Can you no, no, not a channel. dog. Channel a deer. A deer. I mean, a deer. Something channel. lighter than a dog. You know, actually like a wait. Deer. Wait, a, a deer is not lighter than a dog. Well, Christmas typically. Deer, fly, fly, reindeer, oh, oh, okay. You know, but in terms of size, I don't know. Well, maybe not. There's some big dogs out there. Oh, <laughs>